Joining us now is civil rights attorney Jasmine Rand, who has worked several cases involving rape and sexual harassment in the workplace, and we're glad you're with us. Thanks very much for coming in. And let's start by trying to sort of clear up for our audience the differences between these things, sexual assault, harassment, abuse of power in the workplace. I guess they're all different legally speaking, aren't they? Right, they are different legally speaking, which is really important for um, the average citizen out there to understand. We're being bombarded with all of these cases. And we have to understand the difference between sexual assault. Sexual assault varies from state to state, but in general, it's going to involve you know, touching of the breast, touching of the buttocks, or some type of um, penetration. Whereas sexual harassment can be something, uh, we've had cases where, you know, a worker's throwing paper clips or shooting rubber bands at another worker in an inappropriate type of way. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have abuse of authority. And what a lot of these cases are really coming down to, what we see in the media, is abuse of authority, where in the workplace we have men in positions of power abusing the authority they have over a woman in terms of you know whether or not to hire her whether or not to promote her or to give her maybe a special project that would further her career so we really need to um, refocus the discussion also on abuse of power one of the questions I've heard posed time and time again as these new revelations have come out about come out again several different men but particularly in the case of judge Roy Moore as he runs for Senate is what takes these women so long to come forward this in his this particular case the allegations stem from decades ago from when this alleged victim was just a teen at the time. So what do you say to people who wonder why it takes so long for these women to come forward? You know, I think um, my friends and I were just talking about this issue earlier today. And what I think takes women so long to come forward is that silence is what has been expected of women um, from the beginning of time in terms of we don't really have the right to be our own sexual being outside of men. Um, so it requires silence of women. Uh, women are afraid of being chastised. They're afraid people are not going to believe them. It's embarrassing. Um, depending on what religious background you're from or cultural background, it may be something that's very shameful and it's not accepted in your community. And then there's going to be repercussions. Um, even uh, the young woman who wrote the letter to Russell Simmons today mentioned in her letter that she expected to experience repercussions in her career and to lose opportunities over stepping forward. And what do you think the message is to men from all these cases? I mean, I think the message to men is that, well, I think it's really to women and men. And I think men are such an integral part in making um, the workplace better for women and making our environment safer for women. Um, I think we need to re-educate men. And when we went back to abuse of power earlier in the segment, to me, that's really the most critical. The cases of sexual assault, I think, are, are much more clear cut. Um, sexual harassment, I think we understand that in the workplace. But this idea of abuse of authority and leading a woman down a path that she doesn't necessarily want to be led down um, and encouraging her to behave or entertain you sexually to give her, um, you know, to give her a raise or to give her some other opportunity, I think we need to focus on educating men uh, in terms of what behavior is appropriate and what is expected of them. You know, I don't think that there's anybody who doesn't sympathize and feel for these women who have had to endure this kind of uh, behavior in the workplace. But I also know that there are some men who are thinking to themselves, well, gee, what can I say? I mean, you know, there is such a thing as camaraderie in the workplace. There is joking that goes on, uh, you know, in different kinds of workplaces. And some of that might cross the line. And so how do you know uh, if someone who's just trying to sort of be friendly and get along and perhaps be funny with some coworkers, right. how do you know where that line is? And I think that um, a lot of these cases are not cut and dry, and there are not clear lines, and that's, that's one of the problems that we're faced with, right? Even when we talk about rape and sexual assault, this term, no means no, I think is very problematic in many ways. I think it's problematic for men, and it's, it's problematic for women. You know, traditionally, we've, always, we've, we've all heard that. We've been taught no means no. But women are socialized um, not to be sexual beings, not to uh, actively participate or engage in sex or, or um, to have their own sexual identity. So we're taught to say no. We're taught to rebuff men when they come forward. And I think that becomes very confusing for men as well in terms of is this a real no? Is it no, you know, try again? Or is it no, I really mean no? So what a lot of states are leaning toward legally is affirmative consent, which is a more yes means yes standard. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it empowers a woman to have her own sexual identity. And then it also takes away from men. Men are placed in the position of predators in so many of these cases. And what that does is kind of, I think, balances the playing field for men and women. Yes means yes, I give you my affirmative consent. Well, besides awareness, what do you think this will all end up with? Do you see any changes in the laws or any changes in policies at companies? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to, I mean, whenever, you know, companies are taking, taking large financial hits, like we've seen so many companies take in the last few weeks, of course they're going to change their policies. I think there's going to be mass trainings, mass re-education, and I think we're going to think about what we're teaching our young men and our young women on a larger um, sociological scale. We see it happening with race relations in the United States. There's been a lot of tension in race, and there's been some progress in race, even though some people may see it as a temporary setback. We're seeing the same thing with women and women's rights and issues concerning women. We're seeing a, a sudden surge forward in terms of, you know, trying to figure out what are women's rights and how can we all learn to uh, respect women more in the workplace and, and in other parts of society. Jasmine Rand, you've given us a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much.